Hi, my name is Rob Lapidus. I'm here with Coach Kevin Kearns. We're here to talk a little bit about off-court training for our tennis players at our academy. Our academy will be starting June 16th this year, and Coach Kevin Kearns will be our leading all of our off-court training and physical conditioning. Awesome, Rob. Thanks for having me on the team. People out there and potential tennis pros, right? That's what we're trying to build, tennis pros. We're going to show you a little tidbit, some little small pieces, bringing out another athlete of what you're going to be doing this summer, a little taste of what you're going to be seeing from us this summer from strength and conditioning for tennis to up your game. Are you ready to rock and roll? Let's do it. Mr. Lapidus, Coach Lapidus, Coach Rob is already marketing this program. So I'm going to give you a little taste of what to do for, what is the age group, Rob? Seven to 10 year olds? So our age groups go from seven to 15, and they're broken down into three basic groups. The younger group, seven to nine, then the middle group, 10 to 12, and the older group, 13 to 15. And the, the seven to 10 group is, what, what, what's the main thing that they need? So the main thing with the younger kids are to build really strong foundations off court. That means agility, that means flexibility, that means working in good habits of physical conditioning so that when they're on court, you know, it becomes less of an issue and they can really focus on the technical parts of their game. Great, so I'm gonna give my take on what we're gonna do with those children. Just a little piece, a little tease for you guys. So we're gonna, we're gonna walk Becky through some of the movement prep, which is gonna be not only increased flexibility, Rob, increase her leg stamina, increase the strength for this group. So she's gonna step right in front of the camera. She's gonna take her racket, just like you would normally hold the racket. Oh yeah, you're lefty, yeah. so you're gonna have to hold it in the right hand to start. So as she steps forward, she's gonna come down, make sure this knee doesn't go past the toes, bring her elbow down to this ankle. There you go. And then come back up and step forward. Change hands if you want. Now use your dominant hand, yay! Good, bend that back knee a little bit more, make sure this knee doesn't stay past the toes. Bring this elbow a little bit more forward. Feel that stretch now? Uh-huh, it's seven during the morning. Okay, come back up. Two more, step forward. So this will stretch out their hamstrings, their inner thighs, not to mention we're keeping tactile response on the racket. Step forward. Good, Can bring this foot a little bit more forward. Just this way. Did you take ballet? Ah, come all the way back up. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is stretch out the hips, so the backwards reaching lunge. We're gonna come back over, she's gonna take her dominant hand this time and reach over. Good, feel that stretch in your hip? Yeah, it feels good. Now, the top part is to switch to the other side. She's using her non-dominant hand. Good, try to keep the head a little taller. There you go. So this hand here is the key. Oh, yeah, that feels good, doesn't it? And stretch, okay. Two more. And then the other side. So this will not only build leg strength, because they get nice and metric strength at the same time, but they'll also, also, getting some flexibility at the same time. This foot a little bit more forward. Yeah, there's the gymnastics in her. All right, she comes back up. Now, for their balance and hamstring flexibility, we'll work on something called airplane. So she's gonna pull her shoulders back. She can use her, her dominant hand. She's gonna pull her shoulders back, so we're gonna get shoulder strength, posture, and she's gonna just re, uh, excuse me, lean forward on that leg. And because she already has good balance in gymnastics, it looks so good, doesn't it, versus myself. And then come back up and then switch hands if you want. So she'll develop balance and ankle control at the same time, because you gotta kinda be sneaky with these kids, right? You don't wanna tell them what they're doing and then come back up and two more on each leg. Good, one more. Excellent. Now we're gonna take a lateral position. We're gonna have Becky lunge out here, stretching her inner thighs and her glutes and then come back to the other side, which is really good for explosiveness. Come back to the middle and then lunge to the other side. Good, so now she's getting groin stretch, hip stretch, and a little lateral motion. Later on, as they get better at it, we have them explode a little quicker off the line, okay? Now we're gonna have to put the racket down on this one. Now, you might say, how do we work on some strength at the same time? Well, we have them come down to the floor. Come join me, I know you want to. We have them go in this position here, and what we're doing is we're gonna teach some shoulder stability, core strength at the same time, Tell them to flex their thighs, pull their belly button in, and all we're gonna do is breathe in, and then birthday candle, blow out. <laughs> breathe in, and then blow out. So now we're working on, again, breathe in. Now we're working on belly strength, 
core strength, upper body strength all at the same time. Breathe in and breathe out. Okay, so that's just a taste of what we would do for a seven to 10 year old. We have more though. With our middle aged group of 10 to 12 year olds, we really start to focus much more on agility, quickness, and complex movement. Uh, one area that's really important is that they can switch direction really quickly, uh, they can maintain their balance and their body weight, and they start to really use their core strength. Mm, so they have to move on the fly, right? Yeah. They have the quick feet, happy that's feet, right. gotta be keep going, keep going, yeah. keep going. Well, what, one of the best ways, I think, to do that for, for children, and the simplest thing, and even if you don't have an agility ladder, which I have here, and they're short money, they're $50. I've had mine for, I don't know, I'm cheap, so I've had mine for a long time. Even my kids at seven, well, excuse me, no, I keep forgetting my kids' age, at nine and 11 have been doing agility ladder since they were four. And it's an easy way, it's, it's consistent feedback. And if you don't want to buy one, I always tell people, tell parents, chalk in the driveway. So we're gonna have Becky come over here. Now the, the interesting part about this is, whatever movement it is, tennis is not in one plane of motion, right? It's three dimensional, so it's chaotic, it's chaos, it's, it's, it's all over the place. So you have to move in three planes. So we're gonna have Becky do a simple movement which is called two in. That right so this is going to get explosive power, quickness in the feet, and then she's going to come back down, and it's a forward motion, so running to the court. One more time, Becky. Now that's a forward plane of activity. We're going to take the same motion, get a little bit more ballistic, and get a little bit more impact in laterally. Now that's, in, that's, that's high impact. Low impact, we can do this, and for tennis, you see the movement, okay? So we're gonna have her do a simple, a simple movement, just in and out. And this go, lends itself to the fact of staying on your toes. Nice, Becky, hopscotch, right? Oh, and see the ladder's instant feedback, it's okay. As I always say to any of my clients, any of my students, I'd rather have them mess up on the ladder than on the court. Okay, let's try it one more time, Becky. She's like, this is fun, I like this. Now at the same time, we'll have her hold the tennis racket. She's like, I didn't know I was working out today. Now, one of my favorite movements for tennis and for almost any sports was what I call a two in, two out in the lateral. She's gonna come in and out. So what this teaches them is they have to start on the lead leg, whatever direction they're going in. If you have a dominant side, most people wanna do what? Cross over. Anytime you cross over in athletics, you're done. So, and you can add more to this at the end of the puzzle. So as you come in, come out, See, that's not what I'm not supposed to do. You can have them come off and hit, okay? Try that, Becky, with the, rac with the racket in your hand. And she's like, wait, do I not? So left foot's gonna go first, right? Uh, excuse me, right foot's gonna go first. I don't know right and left. I have to make the L the whole time. Good. Now I'll have her come on the other side. Now she did pretty well. Is that, is that your dominant foot? Okay, now her non-dominant foot, which is gonna be interesting. Go. Uh -huh. There you go. So it teaches them right and left, right and left, That's right and really left. really good because when you need to change direction and go for a ball, if you don't start off on the right foot, you're, you're Exactly. If you have to think about your feet, it's like, you know, it's, it's like my own boxing coach, Peter Welch, used to say, smart feet, smart fighter, dumb feet, dumb fighter. So we're gonna take the same push-up position, Becky, and now we're gonna add to it. So what'll happen with a lot of these movements is we'll build. So the kids just go, oh, this is another progression, this is another progression, this is another progression. So we'll have her go back in this push-up position and what we're gonna have her do is she can open her feet if she wants for more control and just rotate. Now that's shoulder stability, shoulder strength, and come back, other side. Core control, all at the same time. And then come back, two more. And then come back, one more, and come back. Now at the same time, we'll go in this position here, she's gonna bring her knee to her elbow, and then come back. Good. That's a lot of core strength, upper body strength, all at the same time. This is simple movements that they can do with or without equipment, excellent. Now one more we'll add in there just for fun is we'll add a one-legged reach in there. You're gonna get ankle, knee, and hip stability at the same time, but the whole kinetic chain. It's all about activating the kinetic chain. She's gonna stand on one leg, she's gonna bend her hip, knee, and ankle, touch the floor, and we'll give her the racket so it makes it look realistic. And lefties are all right, get it? Lefties are all right. Funny, 
good. So she's getting ankle, knee, and hip control the whole, the whole time. And you can have fun with this and go in different angles all at the same time. So this is just a taste of what we can do for that age group. Does that make sense? So now for our oldest age group, we really have to start focusing on complex movements, really putting together all the pieces from the younger groups, and add explosiveness and strength as well, because now's the time where they're really going to be competing mm. seriously on the court. So explosiveness. Explosiveness is a big thing. So you know, we'll use medicine balls, we'll use small sledgehammers possibly, when I mean, there's a lot of implements we can use. But just, just to what the appetite back, if you put the racket down, so we're going to take a simple motion with the medicine ball. This is an eight pound medicine ball. We have them up to 100. This is very good for core control and explosiveness. She's gonna take a twist. Notice how one foot has to rotate, one foot has to plant. It's a simple twist. Good, now she's gonna look forward the whole time. She's gonna be looking where she's shooting down the range. There you go. That's all about core control. Now, at the same time, we're working upper body, core mechanics and, and strength at the same time. Now, if she wants, she can, she can twist this way. And as she twists it towards me, she throws the ball. There's some explosiveness, and I toss it back to her. So you can literally have a whole group doing this at once. Yeah, get a little bit more holistic with this. Okay, you're not gonna kill me. I'm not that old. Well, oh wow, she's got some core control. I don't think she likes me right now. <laughs> so that's gonna get some rotational mechanics and explosive power at the same time. With the medicine ball as well, what we can do for explosiveness and quick feet, we can have them do drills like this. Touch, touch, okay, try that. That's going to get quickness, explosive power, leg strength all at the same time. She's using her legs, she's using her core, she's getting her cardio up. Going on the same lines with the, with the med ball, you can do a figure eight. And if you want, with the figure eight is you add some motion to it, just like she's chasing a ball down. Nice. Good. Now, feel where your feet want to go. That's it, see? There you go. Excellent, very good. Now, taking sim something similar, I also noticed that, you know, shoulder work and, and grip strength is very difficult. Here you go, $20 hammers from Home Depot. The lower you are, the harder it is. So let's work on some shoulder strength, grip strength, and flexibility in the shoulder girdle. She's just gonna go like this, around the head. Around the head, okay, try that. Don't whack yourself, please. Take your time. Now, she's getting shoulder control, wrist control, and strength all at the same time, and flexibility, because the shoulder was made to do this, not just this. Good, okay. And then you take something simple, right? Like an INT. Okay, take that. I'm not size gently. Exactly, so you get this motion for the surf. So she's gonna drop down as low as she can, stretch her shoulder joint on, then come to the side. How's that stretch feel, pretty good? Good. And this is simple, right? It's wash and wear. We're not, it's, not com, it's not fancy equipment, it's not complicated. And, by, and these are four pounds. So if she went down lower, she's gonna get a lot more grip strength. Now, from the, same, from the same motion, we take a simple band. I'll come over there, guys. Simple resistance band. And we can have Becky do a simple motion. Just like this, if she stood on, let's go this way. For balance and strength, no, you're gonna face me. She's gonna stand on one leg and pull, oh, one, one arm, one arm, and pull straight back. And try to not coach down. And then there's some core stability and score strength at the same time. So you can have two kids working at once. Oh, that's okay, she got me. All right, and at the same time, you know, we'll have one with a handle. She holds one side, so we're gonna go two hands. Now, what I want you to do is just snap off that way. Good, explosive, go. Good, good, good. Now, do the same thing with the step. Yeah, 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 good. No, like this. There you go, now she's going to the ball, right? So the, the drills are limitless, what you can do with, with these children in, in core strength. Now, you can take the same motion with the push-up and add, well, I should say the rotational push-up of the, of the T-stabilization and make that more challenging. So Becky comes down and we add to it. She does a full push-up and then rotates towards the ceiling. Okay, core strength, upper body strength, all at the same time. Good. Come on up, Becky. You take the medicine ball, 
for strength, one-legged strength, as we said, in, in hip, knee, and ankle stability, you take the medicine ball, opposite hand, and you can do that. I mean, there's, it, there's no limit to the drills that we're gonna do. Now she's getting core strength, shoulder integrity, everything all at the same time, not to mention balance. And she's a gymnast, and she, her balance is good, so even the ball will challenge her. And you can continue with that if we, if we put the band around her waist, if you don't mind. And you give her the racket. I'm going to clip it. I'm going to hold it. And we have her do some specific tennis drills. Let's say, what would you say? Well, running towards the net? Running this way, stop running this way. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, I got you. See, the resistance, it's, it's tougher than it looks, right? Go ahead, go forward. I got you. You're not going anywhere. Good. So that forward pressure, what she has to do with that is her posterior chain. The back of her legs have to fire off more. Do it off this side too. This. Mm -hmm. Good. So this is constant feedback, and you can team kids up together to do this. Okay? Thank you, Becky. So that's kind of a wrap of what Coach Rob. Lapinas Tennis Academy. Lapinas Tennis Academy in June 16th. Come see us. Sign up sooner than later. You gotta come down and see us. This is the, just some of the fun stuff Coach Rob and Coach Kevin, Coach Kearns will be doing. Thanks guys, hope to see you in June.